Right. Second question. Or do you still say that same one? Uh, maybe say the same one. Yeah, you can say it in Korean now. What? Your name, when and where you were from. Or born. Oh, let's chill out the bird. You need to go soon ago. You can give it to me again. Was kay ganik. April 4th, 1966. Alright, that sounds good. Do you remember? Let's see. Okay. Do you remember what you thought when you first heard about the virus and what you thought? Oh, okay. Do you remember what you thought when you first heard about the virus? What were your thoughts? Right away, it was fear, knowing that it was going to be like contagious, but I guess it wasn't. It's like only when people travel, but still yet there was like pandemics before too. Like, and I've heard stories through that from my granny and she taught us not to like panic and to believe in the um, faith, to have faith and try, try to overcome those fears because there'll be some certain people that will be scared and it's good to just to think like what you were taught like you know to pray religion was part of it and culturally too that we have um natural stuff that we get that i was taught to use and like to pass it down to the next generation is uh we gas rat root that is like a conductor to like medicines different medicines that or different diseases that come and there's other other oils they used from certain kind of um, animals, tree barks, everything, everything here in the where I come from, the boreal forest, and it's connected with the tiger forest and the aquatic fires, meaning like we're in a swampy, we're a swampy Cree too, swampy Métis, and. Um, our forefathers, Kugums, Musums, practiced with all the teachings of um, traditional teas, herbs, and all that, medicines, what they used, from a bark of a tree to like aquatic plants that you have to dig out from the, the you have to die for some of them, and you have to like use a knife, and there's de delicate ways you have to take it out too, and of course you got to believe who planted the stuff, and with the stories I've heard from other people with pandemic stuff like this viruses or anything like a common flu they like there's home remedies to what they what our ancestors passed down to the like our well, our generation right now like there's certain families that practice it and some of them don't and you still use like um there's teething medicines that we make too for babies and that it's still there to see the one one plant we use, we mainly use, it's the rat root, and that's the conductor to all the medicines that say need for diabetes and arthritis. There's different certain species of plants, and they're out there here in the aquatic fires. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the beginning, you know, like um, there was a part where your granny taught you not to be scared, like not to, like, you forgot to. You were taught not to panic? Yeah. Yeah, not to panic. Yeah, even that to calm down. Like, yeah, we were taught that too. Like, to believe, like, you know, pray and to, to understand, like, your religion. Like, he's out there. He's He hears us. Like, as we talk, like, talk about Father God, Holy Spirit and all that. Spirituality, and we had that truth from our ancestors before too. Like we called it like Creator, Holy Spirit, like, you know, I used to watch Beach Combers, it, Holy Spirit, Chief Dan George, it, <laughs> like that, spiritually. All right. When did your life, when did your life start to change as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic? And in what ways did your everyday life change? When did your life start to change, like, because of this whole... The um, transition, when everything, when I knew, like, with the news, the media, like, and through, like, people, communication, the panic and everything, and 
Yeah, that's when I see the big change there, the lockdowns of everything. And that's where the change was, and people know how it feels to be alone, like to be isolated and separation, like, you know. In what ways did your everyday life change in the beginning of this pandemic? Isolation, I guess to say. Like, you know, you were stuck home, you can't do nothing, can't go out, because, you know, there's something out there that's contagious that you don't know if it was, like, airborne or what, or if it came by our area. Yeah, everything. The, you know, to be with amongst people, that separation, that part, too, like, you know, loneliness, too, it hits, like, the anxiety, that part, too, oh, you can't forget that one. It's there, too, like... And the fear. Did you use culture, heritage, or traditional knowledge, traditional practices in any way throughout the course of this pandemic? And how? Yes, I did. I, I did use, I prayed a lot, Roman Catholic and plus believing in the Creator. The, the way we were taught to, like, in our culture, too, we, we believed in, like, see the Holy Spirit and that there was spirituality back then, too, before the Jesuits came here. We had that, too, and then with this Roman Catholic, there's Anglican, there's Christianity, and there's different kinds of denominations here in Cumberland. Yeah, I do believe people pray and that everybody pull together and Spirituality, like even if we were stuck at home, because you could feel a presence. There's the times when you were lonely, times everybody cried, and some people thought it was kind of like, you know, people spoke about revelations. They wanted to understand what this was. So it's like the plague and everything like that. But I spoke to them, talked to them, and... And for myself, too, to, to cope with this, oh, I dealt, like, whoever I came here, I just spoke to them openly, like, how I felt. Like, you know, there's so much, it was like a standstill for us, the uh, humanity. Like, something was telling us, like, this is it, like, I'm warning you, I told you, like. So I just pulled through, and plus, I had, um, Art. I'm an artist too. I do a lot of art. I'm very creative in writing. I listen to music that makes sense. I'm focusing on music that goes with the human heart and soul. I like to focus on people too, monitor people. I say I'm a profiler in my own uh, indigenous, indigenous way because I've learned that through from um, my great great grandfather. Donald Greenleaf taught me that too, and from plus the army people that went abroad to Europe to go fight for um, democracy, to stop the hatred from the Germans. What lessons for the future may come out of this experience for you, your family, your community? Basically, what lessons for the future may come out of this experience for you? From this experience, it's saying too, like, towards humanity and society, like, you know, we have the five things, love, faith, hope, peace, and charity, and like in a way too, we're being reminded us here, human beings, about this sickness, that there's other ones that will be coming too, and we're like, in a way, like we're not being clean too, like pollution and all that garbage, and that's where like everything comes from diseases, and it's us too being clean, cleansing, like, you know, there's certain like, in society right now, like some parts of the world are so poor, poor too, like that's when charity we have to give in to help. Like it's telling us to clean the planet totally, even our acts, everything.
<clears throat> so, what lessons for the future may you have out of this experience for you? Like, like say, do you believe that there's that second wave that's coming? Yes, what there is, you? yes. Ooh. Sorry. Like, would you want to tell your family or your the future, like, generations, like, how to prepare for the next, so, like, the, the next one? Yeah. How to pre pre prepare for the next wave, that's, just say, like, uh, go with what the government told us, like, the isolate yourself and all that, and to teach your kids, like, what you were taught and all that, to believe in God and all that, to pray, if there's going to be a next wave, and just to protect ourselves, too, like, closing, they should still close the... The highways like that, I see that thing will won't go to other communities, but there's certain communities that have it. Eh? It happened. Well, I guess to say it depends on how it goes, because if they can't predict it, it's all up to humanity, us, to probably just focus on that social distancing. Are you good now? Yeah. Alright. Alright. I'll pause it and I'll get that thing. Mm-hmm.